Welcome to another TEPCO training video. My name is Dan Stamness and I'm one of the TEPCO trainers and an Oracle Certified Implementation Specialist for EPPM and P6. Today's video is going to be on using P6 batch reports with Excel macros. A lot of times our clients ask us to build them dashboard reports in Excel, maybe one or two page summary reports, but we need to extract a lot of P6 data in order to produce those reports. So what I typically do is I set up a bunch of reports in P6 and then I use batches in P6 to extract all of the reports at once and then I use Excel macros to bring the data into Excel and paste it in rather than having to run a bunch of reports or layouts out of P6 and manually copy and paste the data into Excel. Here's a few examples of some dashboards that are produced with P6 data. The example I'm going to use for this video looks like this. At the top we have some general information including the unit name, which day of the turnaround that we are through at that point in time, and uh, the unit coordinators, operations leads, and so forth. The second section shows schedule statistics, performance, a target start and finish dates, current start and finish, variance, and there's also earned value data, so planned hours, earned hours, I've also shown the planned hours over the last 24 hours and the earned over the last 24. So when I get into the P6 report editor, I'll explain how I had to set that up. And then over here, I have the SPI, uh, Schedule Performance Index, total, and then I have the SPI for the last 24 hours. The next section shows a Schedule Performance S-curve. This is only earned and planned value. I am not showing any actual value in this report. This particular client is uh, putting their actuals into a different report that the cost team is managing. But many times I work with clients where I actually put the actuals uh, in here as well. So you can get both the schedule performance and the cost performance index. I put in a section in the middle here for risks or issues or deviations from plan. This is just an open text field uh, in Excel. I could have actually ran some reports out of P6, like a P6 notebook, or maybe use the uh, issues areas in P6 to document these things and then draw them out of P6 and drop them in here. But for this particular client, they're just going to open the Excel file and put in any notes here that they want to directly in Excel. The next section shows scheduled performance by discipline. This is not complete at the moment, but the final results will be. And this basically shows scheduled performance by crafts or by discipline, including start and finish times and baseline and finish variance. And then the last section shows top priority jobs. So these are jobs that they've identified that maybe they're not the critical path jobs. Typically they are. But they're the jobs that the turnaround management teams want to watch, monitor throughout the execution of the turnaround. And it has the same type of information, the SPI, the plan versus earned, the start and finish dates, the baseline start and finish, finish variance and float. To get the data from P6 into Excel and into the dashboard is a three-step process. The first part is the P6 report has to be generated and the P6 report is then dropped into an Excel sheet. And the Excel sheet is a raw data sheet, so it's basically just the P6 raw data dropped into that particular sheet. And then the next part is where the dashboard references the data off that sheet. So the final result is the dashboard section. In this particular example, I'm going to need to run five P6 reports for this one unit, so I'm just going to go through the rest of them here. Um, this area here where I build the graph, I actually run two P6 reports for this. I run the planned value or baseline data and the remaining data in one report, but I run the earned value data in a separate report. And what I do is I paste both of those reports into a single sheet. So the first report is going to get pasted into this sheet at cell A1. The second one gets pasted into the same sheet at cell A13. And I'll go into more detail when I do the actual live example. The P6 reports drop into the Excel raw data sheet, and the Excel raw data sheet is referenced to produce the graph that is in the dashboard sheet. 
The next report is going to be performance by discipline. So that is a P6 report, raw data report that also gets dropped into a separate sheet into Excel. And that sheet is then referenced inside the dashboard sheet. And the final one is the high priority work. So I have a separate P6 report for that, which gets dropped into an Excel data sheet. And then that is also referenced in the dashboard sheet. I'm in the Excel file right now, and I wanted to show you just a few things inside here before I move on to uh, showing you the process for running the batch reports and building the macro. Here I have the dashboard sheet. I also have four data sheets down here. This is the raw data from P6. In the dashboard sheet, I do have some formulas built into some of the cells. For example, this cell right here references the MR1 stat sheet, which is the second sheet here. So it's referencing the P6 project name right there, which was built into the P6 report. That's how it's referencing, and that's happening throughout the entire uh, dashboard sheet. Here I've got through day, you can see through day 13 of 25. This is referencing a cell, but it's also doing a formula. It's referencing K3, and it's going K3 minus E7. So K3 is actually the data date from the MR1 stat sheet, and it is subtracting K3 from E7. E7 is the target start date. So basically, it's counting the days from the target start date up to the data date. And this one right here is also a formula. It's calculating E8 minus E7. So E8, the target finish, minus E7. So the duration of this particular turnaround is supposed to be 25 days. So all I did was I subtracted um, E8 from E7. And these two cells right here are also referencing the MR1 stat sheet. So I've built into the P6 report the project name, the data date, the baseline project start, baseline project finish, current start, current finish, I'm bringing over the baseline duration. Now that's in hours because turnarounds are typically scheduled in hours. There's an original baseline hours because we recommend having two baselines. One is going to be a change baseline, which is set as the project baseline. The second baseline is the original baseline, which never gets changed. And that is set as the user primary baseline. There's also the change baseline hours. And we also have the plan value and the earn value. That's the overall plan value and the overall earn value for the project and the SPI calculation. Down here, I have built in a time distributed section to the report. This particular time distribution is the data date minus 24 hours up to the data date. So it's a date range, um, minus 24 up to the data date. I'm also showing it in shifts here. And for some reason, P6 always shows a couple of extra shifts above and beyond my date range and a shift to the left or below my date range. The date range I've set is actually right here because my data date is October 15th at 6 a.m. And I want to show 24 hours of data prior to that. But for some reason, P6 does show a little bit extra even before that and a little bit of the extra plan value past that. But these are the dates or the range that I'm looking for here. And what this does back in the MR1 dashboard sheet, this is what's used to calculate the last 24 hours planned and the last 24 hours earned. And then I can build in the formulas to calculate the SPI, which is the earn divided by the plan. So this formula right here is U10 divided by U9. So here is U10 divided by U9, and it gives us uh, the SPI here. And these are just percentages. So this is a percentage of what that day was worth in correspondence with the overall turnaround hours. So this is U10 divided by N10. U10 and then N10 is over here, which is the total uh, change baseline hours. So it's this number divided by this number. So the point is there are formulas built into the Excel file, which is great because we want the ability to do that. The next section is the S-curve data. And this all comes from the MR1 S-curve data sheet here. And I mentioned earlier that I run two P6 reports for this. First one contains uh, the planned value, both the baselines and the remaining data. And this gets pasted in here at A1. And then I run my earned value separately. And this gets pasted in at A13. So this is the earned value data right here. 
And the reason I run it separately is because I want to run the time range of the earned value up to the data date. So I, I go from, say, project start up to the data date, whereas the data up here might be the project start all the way through the project finish. The reason I do this is, and you may have seen this before if you've done these types of graphs, is that if I don't stop this report at the data date, and if I scroll over, I'll show you where the data stops here. If I don't stop that report as of the data date, these last numbers here will continue. The cumulative line will keep going uh, over to the right, but it will continue to say 504 hours. And what that results in is a blue flat line, because my blue uh, line here is the earned value, but it'll result in a blue flat line running all the way across here. And then I would have to come in here and manually clear those cells in order to make that blue flat line that's running across the graph disappear. If I run the report separately in P6, I can tell it to stop at the data date, and that makes the blue line stop at this point, and I don't have to clear anything. The next section I mentioned is the risk issues and deviations from plan. This I just built as a single text field so they can type in status here right in the Excel sheet. I could have built a P6 report to pull a project notebook topic if I was maintaining these notes inside P6 or maybe the issues area. I could have written an issues report that would have drawn this data in and I would have put in another data sheet into Excel to store that data. The schedule performance section here by discipline references the discipline performance sheet. So this is the data from P6. And this is pretty much a straightforward report out of P6 filtered or grouped by a discipline code. Right here, you can see if I click on here that it is referencing the MR1 discipline performance sheet and cell B3. As I move across, you can watch up here. It's really just directly referencing this sheet over here. So this one isn't really that complicated. I'm just dropping in the P6 data and then I'm telling Excel to re-display the data inside the dashboard. I'll go through the rest of the cells and you can look up on top and see where uh, these are referenced from. So this one is pretty straightforward. Uh, everything comes from P6. However, I did build in conditional formatting on these cells. So I was, uh, I just basically highlighted these cells and I went up to conditional formatting and I built in uh, some icons for that. And I did make some adjustments. I think in this example, a one or above is considered green. Uh, anything from an SPI of 0.9 up to one will turn yellow. These are all reds and zeros right now because there's no data being referenced there at this point. And I also put in conditional uh, formatting on the float. And uh, the last one here is top priority jobs. All of this data references the raw data sheet for high priority jobs. So if I go over here, you can see uh, this is basically a general P6 report. Both this report and the discipline performance report I had built as P6 layouts, and then I converted them into P6 reports. So these were actually the simplest ones to build uh, and didn't take very much time. I just had to choose the fields, uh, the columns that I wanted in there. And I also put conditional formatting on the SPI field, and I also put conditional formatting on the float. Field. I'm in P6 now and I wanted to point out the reports that are built here. So what I've done is I, I built a report group for each one of my units and in the end I actually have seven units here, although I've only been focused on one so far. But I'm going to show you how to run this macro against seven units. And actually for this particular client, this is going to probably have up to 20 units or 20 P6 projects generating reports. If I look under this particular unit called MR1, there's my schedule statistics report. So if I run that, it's raw data. So we've seen this before uh, back in the Excel sheet. So it's pretty basic. If I run the baseline and remaining S-curve data, This is also just a time distributed report that I set up in the wizard. So uh, all I did was I went to the reports view and added a new report, went through the report wizard, selected time distributed, and it's a summary report uh, at the project level. Did the same thing with the earn value one. Um, I will open this one up and show you, I'm gonna go to the modify button and I'll show you how I stopped the data as of the data date. So I'm gonna open up my properties window here in the report editor. I go to the report tab here, and here's the time scale options button. 
I click on that. And you can see I hard coded the date to timescale start is for October 1st. But then down here, I said timescale finish is the data date. I actually put in data date minus 48 hours. The reason I did this is because for some reason in P6, when I am doing a time distributed report by shift, it actually gives me a lot more data on the, in the back. But this helps me control, and I had to play with that number a little bit, the 48 hours. So depending on what type of time scale you're using, I like doing turnaround time scales in a shift manner but if you're going to be doing it by day uh, you may not need to do anything like this so you just kind of got to check it out and see uh, what's going to work for you and and uh, possibly put in a minus uh, 24 or minus 48 here uh, to make sure that your data stops what happens if i don't do this is my earned value actually runs ahead an extra day and i don't want that to show because it'll give me a flat a small flat line it won't flat line the earned value all the way across the graph but it will give me a couple extra shifts of a flat line and i don't like to have that displayed because it can confuse management as to why that is there it almost implies that there's actuals ahead of the data date when there really isn't and i have no idea why it functions this way i think it's just kind of a an oversight uh in the tool and something that could probably be fixed by Oracle uh, in the future. But either way, uh, we found a workaround, so that's good. I'm going to cancel this and get out of this report and show you the other two. High priority work, if I run this one, we've seen this data already in Excel. It's just a raw data report. This is based on an activity code, so it's grouped by an activity code uh, for high priority jobs. And I have SPI, planned, earned, uh, the variance of those. And then I get into the dates, uh, start and finish, and baseline dates, and then finish variance and float. So this one I mentioned was pretty simple to build. I built it as a P6 layout, activities view layout first. And then I just hit the add new report button and I said use current screen and was able to just build this one pretty quickly. And the same goes for the performance by discipline. Uh, this is also an activity code. I'm going to go into the modify window and there is something I did change here. This is the power of using the report editor over using layouts. You'll see that this says activities by RC discipline. This RC discipline is actually a resource code, but resource codes cannot be used in the activities view. So I'm going to double click here and show you how I set up this group and sort. If you get into using the report editor, you can make changes like this and you cannot do this in any other view. So normally what I would have done is I set up the report to be by activities and then I loop through or group by the primary resource. But I actually didn't want to show the primary resource as the summary grouping. I wanted to show the resource code for RC discipline. So in the group by window in the report editor, it gives you some more options. So normally you would see just primary resource right here at the top. But you'll see in the report editor that you have all these other options with these slashes after it. These options are not available in the activities view. So I was able to scroll down and say, no, I want to actually uh, group this by primary resource, but by the RC discipline, which is a resource code assigned to that resource. So I can roll these things up and I have to maintain a resource code now against all the resources, but it prevents us from having to assign an activity code and it's a little bit more stable. So like I mentioned, I've actually set up five reports, but I, I set up all five reports for each unit. I could have actually merged these reports together. Like for example, the schedule statistics, I could have made this all one report and ran it against all seven units, I would just have to group by project or go to my group and sort window and group by project to separate all of that data. But when I'm doing this type of report where I'm taking this data and bringing it into Excel, I like to keep these things separate just for the sake of troubleshooting. And the reason being is that if this was all in one report and then I went in and someone said, hey, we wanna add another code or another data field. If I added another row of data, inside the report, it would offset all the way down and it would add a row to every one of the seven units that I'm gonna be working with here. That means in Excel, when I paste it in there, all of my data references would be offset and I would have to go into Excel and fix that. So I like to keep them all separate 
And you might think that it's a little bit of overkill, but uh, when it comes to troubleshooting, I tend to find that it's a little bit easier if I am having a problem with a particular unit or a particular dashboard, I can just resolve it inside that particular report for that unit. Now, when I built these out, I built the first five reports, but be aware that in every one of these five reports, I had to put on a filter to make sure that it only pulled data from the MR1 project. So if I go over to my projects view, here's the MR1 project. I need to make sure that those five reports only pull data from this project because I'm keeping all of the reports separate uh, for each one of the project files. So I'll uh, go into the modify view and just show you the filter here. I just used a WBS filter, but I set it at the project level. So I came in here, WBS is under, and I selected the top level of MR1, which is uh, the project level. And I did that in all five of those reports. So once that was set up and I had the first five built, all I had to do was copy and paste these for the remaining six units, but I did have to open up every one of these reports and change the filter to make sure it's drawing from that particular unit or the corresponding unit or corresponding uh, project ID. So just be aware of that. I did have to come in and adjust the filters on every one of these reports. So the setup can take a little bit of time, but the end result is well worth it. Now, once all the reports were built, I came in and I set up a batch. So I'll click on my batch button here, or you can go to the tools menu to get into that. And I created a batch report called TA Management Summary Report Data. And if you look at how many reports I've dropped in here, there's five reports and there's seven units. So there's 35 reports in this batch. Also be aware that when I named the reports, the only thing I changed on the reports were the unit IDs or the project uh, IDs. So you can see these five are for MR1, these five are for MR3, but I left all of the other text identical and uh, the, the uh, numbering convention that I used at the beginning is also identical. This made it easier for me when I was building the macro in Excel and I'll explain more on that when I get in there. I'm going to close this and I'm going to run the batch now so you can see how that works. And this is the run batch uh, reports button right here. I'm going to select the TA management summary report data uh, batch that I built. Click OK. And here I need to save these to ASCII text files. Now when you do this, it's good to make sure that you do not save them to your documents on your C drive. Rather, it's better to go to the C drive and go to the users folder to the public documents folder. And the reason I say that is because if I want to send this Excel file to another P6 user and have them run the exact same batch report and the macros to pull them into Excel, I cannot have this path in the macros in the Excel file. And I'll show this to you when we get in there. I can't have Excel going to a user's My Documents folder because what happens is the public right here does not say public. It actually has the particular user's ID for that uh, PC that they're logged into. And that user ID is unique to that PC. So if I send the, the Excel file to another user, it's going to try and find uh, these Excel files from P6 and it's not going to find them because that particular machine doesn't have that same user ID on it. So it's good to use your users folder uh, and the public folder because this is the same path on all PCs on their C drives. So it becomes a common path and it doesn't get uh, messed up by having someone's unique user ID inside the path. I'm not changing the field delimiter or the text qualifier, so I'm going to click OK, and you can kind of see how fast this is going to run. Now, if you get this, and you will eventually, this is basically the warning saying that all of those Excel files already exist. This is happening because I've already ran this batch in the past, and it sees that all of these files are already on my C drive. So I do want to overwrite them, and this is basically asking if I want to overwrite all those files. Uh, I'm going to click Yes. And you can see how fast all of these reports are running. That's 35 reports, and that only took a few seconds. And if I go out to my C folder, 
and I go to users and I go to public like I said make sure you set it up as public don't use one of the user folders because that path will not be common on someone else's machine and I also built uh, underneath my public documents I uh, drop those into a folder called p6 reports these are all of the reports that we just ran and it only took a few seconds if I open up one of them there's the data so very quick and the goal here is to make sure that you can run these batches and get them into Excel without having to use the copy and paste method. Because if I had to open 35 reports and copy and paste that data into Excel, that would take quite some time. So uh, the goal of this entire video is to speed that method up. Now I'm back in Excel and I've already uh, written the macro to bring all of this data in, but I'm going to walk through that again. First thing you need to make sure of is that you have your developer toolbar uh, turned on. So if that's not on, you can right click uh, in your ribbon here and you can go find that and get that turned on. Under the development uh, tab here, I have a record macro button. In order to cause uh, the P6 data to come into Excel through the macro, all I did was I hit the record macro button and it's going to ask me for a macro name. I'm just going to leave this uh, default name there for now because, like I said, I've already built uh, the full macro. And I'm going to click OK. Now, right now, Excel is actually recording. It's recording my mouse clicks and my keystrokes. So as I move along here, it's storing all of my mouse clicks and keystrokes into this macro. And at some point when I'm finished doing what I'm doing, I have to hit the Stop Recording button. So to get this data in here, the first thing I need to do is I need to go to File, Open, and I need to find the P6 batch reports. So I'm going to go out to my C drive again. I'm going to go to the Users folder, Public folder, Public Documents, P6 reports. And you can see that this is blank at the moment, and that's because I need to change this because the P6 reports are CSV files. So I'm going to change this over here to say all files. And I'm going to write a short macro on this one, and I'm only going to choose the MR1. So I'm just going to run this macro on five of them. And uh, I can control click down on every one of the P6 MR1 reports. And all I'm doing right now is I'm telling to open all five of those reports. So I'm going to click open. Keep in mind, the macro is recording me right now. So it is recording what I just did. Now here's my number five report from P6. So I'll just start here, TAEX05. That's the MR1 performance by discipline. I'm just going to highlight all of these rows. I'm going to copy them. And then I'm going to go to the dashboard report. And I'm going to go to the discipline raw data tab. I'm going to click an A1 and I'm going to paste. I'm going to go back to the other Excel files. And I'll just go in reverse here. So I'm going to use number four, which is the top priority jobs. I'm going to highlight all of these. I'm going to come back to the dashboard report and I need to go to the High Priority Jobs uh, Raw Data tab, click on A1, Paste. And then I need to go to number three, which is my Earned Value Report. I'm going to highlight all of this data, copy. I'm going to go back to the dashboard, and I'm going to go into the S-Curve Data uh, Raw Data Sheet. This one, remember, has two reports in it. Uh, I grabbed the earned value. That needs to be pasted at uh, A13 right here because that's where I set the graph up to read from. Back to Excel, I'm going to go into TA EX number two, which is my baseline and remaining data. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go back to the dashboard. And I'm, gonna, I'm still in the uh, S-curve data tab. This one goes to A1, so I'm going to paste. And then I'm going to go to TAEX01, which was my stats. I'm just going to highlight the entire rows and back to the execution dashboard. And this needs to go into MR1 stat sheet, and I paste.
And if I go back to the dashboard, all that data has been updated. There is something I forgot to do in P6, and I'll explain that in a minute. If I am complete at that point, uh, one thing I can do that I build into part of the macro is I go to each one of these and I say file close. Now, this is asking me if I want to keep the data that's on the clipboard. I'm going to say no, and that is something I'm also going to show you how to get rid of, uh, but we have to manually code that into the macro. And I'm going to do a file close on each of the other Excel files. So I'm selecting each of the raw data P6 files, and I'm doing file close. A couple more. And the last one. Now I'm done. Um, I've brought in all of that P6 data and updated the dashboard. I'm going to hit stop recording. It's this button right here. And now I'm going to go and click this button called macros. And the one that I had built was macro number two. And I'm going to hit the edit button. And I'm going to show you a little bit about what this did. Now, I do not code macros. I do not know how to write the code, but I do know how to read it. Um, so I let the recording functionality take care of all this. But this is what the macro did, is it wrote code for me. This first part right here is uh, where I told the macro to open all five of the Excel files. So you can see where it says workbook.open file name, and then it directs to the path where it's at. Remember, it says public right here. If that was a username in there, another user on another PC would not be able to run this macro. It would give them an error. Then it goes to selecting rows. Uh, this one was in the uh, MR1 discipline performance. And this whole section right here goes and uh, pastes the data into the sheet. And if I keep following the code down, this is all a copy and paste data right here. At the end here, so from there down to here is all the copy and pasting that I was doing. And then I tell it to close uh, the workbooks. So, or I'm sorry, the Excel files. So this tail end is where I told it to go through all of the five of the Excel files and close them. I'm gonna close this macro and I'm going to show you the real one. So if I go into the developer tab and I go to macros, here's the final one that I built. And I'm going to click edit. This one is a little cleaner. Uh, this one opens the first five reports uh, for um, MR1. And then it does the copy and paste. So here I'm copying for the report number one. It's copying that data and pasting it into the appropriate sheet in the Excel file. This is taking report number two out of P6 and pasting it into um, the appropriate sheet in there, which is the S-curve data. This is report number three, which is also pasting into S-curve data. This is the fourth report. It's copying and pasting into the high priority jobs tab. And this is the fifth one, and this is copying and pasting into the Discipline Performance tab. So if you start recording macros, you'll start kind of getting an idea of what it's doing in the background here. Now, there is one thing that I added here, and I had to Google it to find it. Uh, remember that pop-up window that came up that said, uh, you have a bunch of data on your clipboard, do you want to keep it? And I said no. If I didn't put this line item in here, while the macro is running and bringing all that data in, that window is going to keep popping up on me. And I didn't want that to happen. It'll actually happen seven times because I'm going through uh, seven units on this macro. So I found out on Google uh, this piece of code. I had to type this in manually after I was done with all of my pasting. Put this code in there, and it'll make sure that that clipboard um, question uh, automatically answers and you don't have to click no on it each time. And then once this uh, data for MR1 was all pasted in, I have these line items down here, which closed all of the P6 CSV files for me. So I didn't have to go back and close all of those. So the entire macro to update one of the units is this code data right here. 
once I had that one built, I duplicated it seven times. So you can see where I start, started down here, and I've got it, it running again. Actually, I'm, I duplicated it six more times. And once I duplicated it, all I did is I highlighted this data, and I need to do some name changing on here because it's a different unit name. So I highlighted the data and I hit Control F to bring up the find window. I hit the replace button and I said, if the text contains MR1, change it to, and if I was wanting to do like say unit MR3 next, I'd say change it to MR3. And I made sure that uh, the option down here for selected text was on. So basically I was able to copy and paste the macro code six more times and all I had to do was a find and replace to replace the uh, unit name. In this case it's MMDA or MMDI. So I did that and if I scroll down you'll see that I did it seven times, once for each unit. At the end I did put in a line item here uh, which I recorded to make sure that when I'm done with the macro it selects the first sheet or the first dashboard. That way I'm not stopping somewhere on a data sheet or on a raw data sheet. It brings me back to the, the first sheet. And that's pretty much it. I mentioned earlier that there was something wrong with my S-curve data uh, when I recorded that macro. And what's going on is P6 is not recognizing that I am set to see my time distributed data by hours. I've seen this uh, come up in version 8 when it came out, and I've also seen it in versions 15 and 16 since then. It hasn't really been corrected yet. But I need to go to my user preferences, edit user preferences, and if I look at my resource analysis tab, this has to be set to hours. It has to be set to hour because I am putting my time scale in by shift, and in order to separate all of the time distributed data by shift, this has to be set by hour. And you'll notice that any time you change this, um, you'll get a warning on it uh, about performance. But I haven't really, for the kind of work that I've been doing, haven't uh, seen any sort of performance issues. But I don't necessarily run project files that are over 100,000 activities. So um, I heard that you can have performance issues. But I think they're pretty subtle, um, not really noticeable. So anyhow, this needs to be set to hour. And then I'm going to close this. The problem is, is every time that I log into P6 after this, uh, P6 does not seem to remember that I have set my user preference to hour. So in order to correct that, I have to come up and go edit user preferences. I don't have to do anything. All I got to do is go to edit user preferences and close this and it will resolve uh, that issue with how my um, time distributed data is coming out in the reports. So I've explained uh, what kind of dashboard I'm building here. Um, I've explained the reports out of P6 that I need to produce each one of the dashboards. And I've also uh, shown you the raw data tabs in Excel. And I've shown you how to set up the batch in P6 to generate all of the P6 reports. And I've showed you the macro to draw all the data into the Excel uh, file. What I'm going to do now is run the entire process so you can see how quick this works. Keep in mind, I'm doing seven units, five P6 reports per unit. I'm going to run the, the batch report out of P6. ASCII text files. By the way, it remembers the path that I had already put in there. I'm going to click OK. I need to tell it, yes, go ahead and overwrite the pre-existing ones. My batches are all done. I can go to Excel now. I can go up to the developer toolbar and I can go to macros and I could run the P6 data import. Right now it is opening all of those P6 files that are currently in CSV format and it's pasting them into the appropriate spreadsheets for each one of those units. Each time it pauses, that's when it's opening a new uh, set of five reports. And so we're going to see that pause for seven times.
then I'm back at the MR1 dashboard. I do actually have the other six dashboards in here. So if I walk through each one, all of that data has been updated. So seven dashboards, one for each project or one for each unit in this particular turnaround. That process took about a minute to a minute and a half. Imagine what it would take if you were having to open all 35 of those P6 reports and copy and paste that raw data into these Excel sheets. It would take quite some time, but here we were able to do it in like a minute or a bit over a minute. Now I've been on some projects or some turnaround executions where I'm about to go into some sort of management meeting and it's in five minutes and someone comes up and gives me some more status. Uh, it seems to happen all the time. Usually in the past, if they did that, I would have to say, hey, I, I have a cutoff time for this. I can't regenerate the reports. The management team is not going to see this status that uh, you brought in. So make sure you bring it in earlier next time or by my deadline. But now if that happens, five minutes before a meeting, they can bring that status in. I can put it into P6. I can run the batches again and run the macro again and still make the meeting with the data that I need. So there's quite a benefit to making sure that you have up-to-date status uh, in there, especially if someone brings in some status to you late. Uh, not that we want to promote that. You should have a deadline for them to have the data there. Uh, but if it does happen and you can acquire some status at the last minute, using the P6 batches along with an Excel macro will really speed things up for you. That completes this video presentation. Uh, thanks for joining us. If you need any implementation support for P6 or EPPM, or if you would like training, uh, please visit the TEPCO website at www.tepco.us.